Good morning. Have you take your Bibles this morning to the Gospel of Luke, chapter number 5. Luke, chapter number 5. Luke, chapter number 5. Again, want to thank, as you're turning your Bibles there, I want to thank our guests for joining us, being with us this morning. And uh, I hope that uh, the services will be a blessing to you. And so Luke chapter number 5 is where we're going to be coming from. Uh, this is uh, sermon number 15 in the Gospel of Luke. Luke chapter number 5. We're not going to read a very uh, long passage of Scripture. We're just going to read verses 12 through 16. So it is our custom here at the church that we want to give reverence to God's Word. And so in doing so, I would ask you to stand as for the reading of God's Word. We want to give honor and respect for the reading of it. If you are limited health-wise, not able to stand, I understand and the Lord understands. But if you are... Uh, we would appreciate it, and the Lord would appreciate giving reverence to his word. Luke chapter number 5, verse number 12, a very, very familiar portion of scripture. The Bible says this, And it came to pass, when he was in a certain city, behold, a man full of leprosy, who seeing Jesus fell on his face, and besought him, saying, Lord, if thou wilt, thou canst make me clean. And he put forth his hand and touched him, saying, I will, be thou clean. And immediately the leprosy departed from him. And he charged him to tell no man, but go and show thyself to the priest and offer for thy cleansing according as Moses commanded for a testimony unto them. But so much the more went there a fame abroad of him and great multitudes and came together to hear and to be healed by him of their infirmities. And he withdrew himself into the wilderness and prayed. The title of this morning's message, church, is Where True Genuine Cleansing Comes From. Where True Genuine Cleansing Comes From. How many of you believe this, that there needs to be a cleansing taking place in our world? There needs to be a real cleansing taking place. How many think there needs to be a cleansing taking place in our societies? There needs to be a cleansing taking place in our schoolhouses. There needs to be a cleansing taking place in our courthouses. There needs to be a cleansing taking place in marriages. There needs to be a cleansing taking place in, in all aspects of our lives. There needs to be a cleansing taking place. And today we're going to see where true, genuine cleansing comes from. So let's have a word of prayer, and then you can be seated, and we'll get to the message here this morning. Father, we come before you, Lord, today. Lord, we are thankful for just your, your word, the truth of it. And Lord, I ask you that your will and way would be done. And Father, I pray that if there's anybody here, Lord, who has yet to accept your son Jesus as your Savior by faith, then Lord, I pray that it would be the day that that would take place. Lord, I ask you, Father, that your word would go forth and the truth of the word would, Lord, not the truth that comes from a man, but the truth of the Bible would touch the hearts of your people. So Lord, I ask you, that your will and way would be accomplished. Thank you, Lord, for the fellowship prior to the service. Thank you, Lord, for the music that has been sang and, and the music and the special that was done, Lord, for your honor and for your glory. I ask you, Lord, you please be with us now. And I pray that, Father, that you would speak to our hearts and that we'd leave here knowing that through the word and by the spirit, you spoke to hearts. We love you. We thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated. Listen to this account that I, I, come, I came across when I was studying this. An evangelist from the early 1800s preached on 1 John 1, 7, where it says, the part of the verse says, the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from all sin. How many thankful for that truth? <laughs> the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from all sin. And then it goes on to say, a stranger asked him to walk home with him, and against all advice, he did. Ushering the preacher into the rear of a building, he locked the door and pocketed the key. I think that's a little sketchy right off the bat right there. Yeah, absolutely. He pocketed the key. He said, don't be afraid. I just want to ask you some questions, said the stranger. Do you believe what you preach tonight? I most certainly do, replied the preacher. The stranger continued, we're in the back of a saloon and I'm the owner. Mothers come in here, lay their babies on the counter, and beg me not to sell liquor to their husbands. I turn a deaf ear to their cry. When a man leaves here, we see that he is well under the influence. 
More than one man has been killed on the railway tracks after leaving here. Can God forgive a man like me? The preacher says, I only have one authority. The blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from all sin. The stranger went on, if a man doesn't spend all of his money on liquor, we take him to our gambling hall and fleece him of his last dollar with marked cards. So they, they cheat him. Can God forgive a man with a heart like that? The preacher said, he repeated, I have only one authority. The blood of Jesus Christ cleanseth us from all sin. The stranger had more to say. Across the street is my wife and daughter. Neither has heard a kind word from me in five years. Their bodies bear the marks of my brutal attacks. Can God forgive a man with a heart like that? The preacher lowered his head and said, You've painted one of the darkest pictures I've ever seen. But still, I only have one authority. The blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from all sin. That night, that man became a new creation in Christ. Yeah. Calvary Baptist Church, let me tell you, the blood of Jesus Christ cleanseth us from all sin. Praise the Lord for that. Now in our text this morning, we see a man who is in desperate need of cleansing as he approaches the Lord Jesus. Jesus is approached by a man who is considered a social outcast. And the reason why he is approached uh, uh, by someone who is considered a social outcast is because he is a man who is full. Now let me have your attention, please. Full of leprosy. Verse number 12, the Bible says, And it came to pass when he was in a certain city, behold, a man full of of leprosy. Now, when the Bible tells us that he was full of leprosy, it's indicating to us, folks, that this man is beyond all human help. It, it, it is telling us this, folks, that this man is going to die alone. The, in, in, in Palestine, in, in these days, there was mainly just kind of two types of leprosy. Uh, one type is it, it, it's still considered a disease, but it is less serious of the two. Uh, it would be considered just a very bad skin disease that would take place on a person. The more severe type of leprosy would start off as kind of like a white blemish. Let's just, let's just use the hand as an example. It would start off as a white blemish and it would begin to spread. And as it would spread, it would eat the body, it would eat the tissue, it would eat the flesh. And eventually all that would be left is just a nub. It would literally eat a part an individual, and people would say it was this, it was called a living death. A living death. Now, it was according to Jewish law and custom that if any person had leprosy, they were segregated and they were an outcast from society. So if somebody were to be walking and minding their own business and they were approaching a leper, somebody with leprosy, it was the leper's responsibility to take their finger and cover their upper lip and they were supposed to shout out, unclean, unclean. Warning people who are not infected with leprosy of their presence. And so they were an outcast. They were not uh, allowed to be around anybody. And for these reasons, ladies and gentlemen, I just want to inform you that leprosy is a picture of sin. It's a picture of sin because what leprosy does to the body, sin does to the soul. What leprosy will do to the body Eat it, deteriorate it, kill it. That is exactly what sin will do to the soul. Listen, like leprosy, sin destroys. Like leprosy, sin kills. Uh, uh, like leprosy, sin will eat away at a person's life. Isn't that the truth? Somebody say amen there. It will eat away at a person's life if not dealt with. And because like leprosy, because sin... When it is finished, come on, if you know the verse, say it with me. When it is finished, bringeth forth death. That's what it happens. Like leprosy, sin causes separation. Like leprosy. Just as the people were separated from society, it was man's sin that caused separation from God. Yeah. People with leprosy, folks, they were often despised by the rabbis of the day. They're often despised because uh, there was this notion, there was this uh, belief that the, many of the rabbis held to that when somebody was diagnosed with leprosy, 
He then, this must have been, now let me have you, this must have been a form of God's judgment. And so therefore, since this is a form of God's judgment, they, they, then they don't deserve pity and they don't deserve mercy. Now folks, let me just be really flat out honest with you here at Calvary Baptist Church. That is not true. That is not true. Because the truth of the matter is this, God's people get sick too. God's people are, are, can be affected uh, by disease and God's people can be affected by illness and God's people can be affected by cancer and listen there, there are radicals in the world today that will say listen if you have cancer if you have this disease if you're going through this and if you're going through that then obviously it must mean it must mean you are not right with God in some way shape or form that is a lie from the devil church. it's a lie from the devil well then why do people get sick why do good people get sick because we live in this world cursed by sin and sin affects everything, and sin affects everyone, church. We live in a sin-cursed world. This particular leper that is mentioned, he broke the rules. He broke the rules of society. Second part of verse number 12, the Bible says this, Who seeing Jesus fell on his face and besought him, saying, Lord, if thou wilt, thou canst make me clean. Okay, this man knew protocol. He knew what he was supposed to do. He knew that even when Jesus was there, the disciples, whoever was there, he was supposed to make his presence known by saying, unclean, unclean, unclean. That's what he was supposed to do. He was supposed to even keep his distance. But the Bible says that he didn't do that. No, the Bible says that he approached Jesus, and this is what he did. He fell on his face, church. Oh, <laughs> Listen, I, I think I'm pretty... I'm pretty certain of this. I, I can't say this without 100% certainty, but I'm like 99.99999% sure. When we see Jesus, we're going to fall on our faces. When we see Jesus, we're going to fall on our faces. And many times people say, well, I see him, I'm going to give him a big old bear hug. When, when I see him, I'm going to give him a high five. When I see him, I'm going to say, finally, finally glad to meet you. Uh, uh, listen, uh, they might mean well by saying stuff like that, but the truth of the matter is this. When we see him, we will show him reverence, we will show humility, and we will put our faces to the floor because he is king of kings and lord of lords, church. That is what I believe we will do. Without Listen, God's word does tell us every knee shall bow. Every knee, your knee, my knee, every knee shall bow before the Lord Jesus. And here's this leper. He goes to the Lord Jesus and he pushes his face to the ground. And this is an expression of reverence. This is an expression of worship. This is an expression of humility. And, and I love what, what he says. He says, who seeing the Lord Jesus fell on his face and besought him saying, Lord, if thou wilt... Thou canst make me clean. Notice, he didn't come questioning the Lord and said and asking if he could make him clean. He asked the Lord, if thou wilt. Well, what do you mean? He's saying, Lord, I know you're able, but are you willing? I, I, I know that you can. I know that you're able, but are you willing to heal someone like me? Are you willing to do that? Hey, church, l listen, I think what we see from this leopard is a, uh, this leper is a good way on how we ought to pray. Good way on how we ought to pray. Well, how ought we ought to pray? Well, first of all, we got to understand who we're coming before, and we need to make sure that we show reverence. We need to make sure that we show humility. We need to make sure that we are willing to bow ourselves. We need to be willing to do that. And listen, and when we pray, we ought not be asking, God, could you do this for me? Or God, could you do that for me? God, could you make life a little bit lighter? Uh, uh, a little bit lighter, excuse me. God, can you just make life a little bit easier for me? No, 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 no. Let's not ask God if he could. Let's ask God, God, are you willing? And let's keep in mind our prayer request with the idea of this. Lord, not my will, but thy will be done. And so here is this leper, and he's just simply just asking, Lord, I know that you're able. I know that you can. But wilt? If thou wilt? Notice Jesus, he breaks the rules of society too. Verse 13. And he put forth his hand and touched him, saying, I will. Be thou clean. <laughs> okay. The Bible says Jesus touched him. 
Listen, I don't know how many people were there. The Bible doesn't say. We can assume his disciples were there. We can assume that. I think that's a safe assumption. And usually there was a crowd that would typically follow him quite a bit. So as this leper is making his way closer, I, I, I'm assuming that people are kind of like kind of scattering back a little bit because of his disease, because of his infirmity, because of his leprosy. And he's going to Jesus and he falls down before Jesus with his feet to the ground. And I'm sure that people are at that situation, they're probably saying, stand back, stand back, stand back. And Jesus is allowing him to be there. And then what Jesus does is that he touches him. He touches him. Now, again, when Jesus touched him, that was a big no-no. That was a big no-no to their culture. That was a big no-no to their laws. That was a big no-no. And I'm just imagining, as Jesus lays his hand on this leper, now imagine with me the gasp that people may have had. <gasps> what did he just do? He, he's touched. It's one thing to allow him to get that close. That's one thing. But, but, but look at what he's doing. He's touching him. He laid his hand upon him. Hey, you know what? I, you know what I think what is being conveyed right here? Come on, church. We know this. Jesus didn't have to touch him. He didn't have to touch him. There's been plenty of miracles where Jesus didn't have to touch anybody. All he had to do was say the word and it was done. Lazarus come forth. He didn't have to touch Lazarus, but he came forth. He cast out demons only with his words. Come on, there's been, uh, uh, peace be still is what he said to the sea. He, 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 there's power enough in his word. But here is Jesus, and he is touching this leopard. You know what I think was being conveyed right here? That our Lord Jesus is showing compassion on an outcast. He's showing compassion on the one that no one wants to show compassion towards. He's trying to show compassion on someone who is infected with this disease that nobody wants to be around, and he's showing compassion and love to somebody that nobody wants to be around. That's still our Lord, by the way. That's still him, by the way. And he's showing compassion on him. And I, and I love, I love what, what he said. He, he asked him, if thou wilt, and the Lord Jesus says this, I will. I will. What, what does this show, church? Come on, let, let's keep, let's keep in, in mind here. What is leprosy a representation of? What does it represent? It represents sin. And it shows us this, that Jesus is willing to cleanse people of their sin. Amen. He's willing to cleanse people with their sin. Listen, who struggles with sin? Everybody. Everybody struggles with sin. We all struggle with sin. All of us do, ladies and gentlemen. Each and every one of us struggle with sin. And so here's what we can also take away from that. Jesus is willing to cleanse everybody from their sin. Yeah. Aren't you thankful that he's just not able, but he's willing? He's willing. And immediately the Bible says, the leprosy departed from him. Immediately. Right away. Listen, the healing and cleansing uh, took place not as a gradual healing. No, no, no. It was an immediate healing. Hey, listen, here's the thing. When Jesus cleanses you of your sin, it's immediate. When he cleanses you of your sin, it's right away. It's not some gradual thing. It's not something that you have to prove. It's not something that you have to try to retain. Listen, if you couldn't gain your salvation, what makes you think you can retain your salvation? If you can't earn your salvation, what makes you think that you can keep your salvation? No, no, no. It's not based on us. It's based on him working. That's what it is. And so here is this leper, and, and the Bible says that he was cleansed immediately. Come on, prior to his cleansing, he was segregated. Prior to his cleansing, he was cut off from society. Prior to his cleansing, he was destined to live and die a lonesome death. He may have lived with other lepers, but come on, these are strangers to him. Okay, come on. Put yourself in this man's shoes. Put, your man, put yourself in this man's situation. We, this is all we know about this man. We don't even know his name. But this is a man who lived a life. Th this is a man who was really real. It, it's, okay, I, I'm going to take a little bit of liberty here, okay? So, so please, please understand. This man may have had a wife and kids. This man may have had a good job. This man may have been brought up in a good home. This man may have had a good education. 
And all of a sudden, maybe he came home from work one day and he's saying, hey, sweetheart, my, my hand's kind of bothering me. Hey, look at this. I don't, I don't even know where this came from. Look at that weird thing. Have you ever done that before? You look in the mirror and say, where did this thing come from? That saying, like, I know you like the back of my hand. You don't even know what's on the back of your hand sometimes. You're like, where, where in the world? I don't even know where this came from. Oh, don't worry about it, sweetheart. Why don't you just go to bed and go to work tomorrow and we'll worry about it later. It'll probably go away on, on its own. A man goes to work, comes home, and having supper. He's like, this thing's bothering me even more so. I don't know what this is. Do you think it could be what I think it is? I don't know. I'm not sure. Well, okay, well, maybe I'll just swing by and look, talk to the priest. Maybe they may, might diagnose it. So the man goes and talks to the priest and says, hey, can you take a look at this? And the priest says, I've got some bad news. I've got some bad news. This is leprosy. Leprosy? I don't even know how I got it. I don't know how you got it either. Well, can, can I go tell my wife and kids? No, no, no. You're not allowed to go home. You're not allowed to go home. Well, what about my job? I mean, I mean, I, mean, I was expected to get a raise, and, and, and I, I got to at least tell my employer I'm not going to show up. No, 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 no. You can't go anywhere. You have to be completely cut off. You are cut off from your wife. You are cut off from your kids. You are cut off from, uh, from seeing your kids' birthdays. You are cut off from celebrating your anniversaries. You are cut off from celebrating holidays. No, no, no. You are completely cut off from society. Now make sure you practice this very well. Unclean, unclean, unclean. You make sure you practice that and keep your distance. His life was turned upside down. And he was full of leprosy. He was full of it. It, it, it was, he was going to die a lonesome and probably most likely gruesome death. But here's the thing. After the cleansing. Praise the Lord for the Lord Jesus who cleanses leprosy. He cleansed After his cleansing, listen, his health was restored back to him. After the cleansing, he would be restored back to society. After his cleansing, he could be restored back to his family. After his cleansing, he can be restored to living an abundant life once again. Now, come on, church. What would be the temptation if you have been in this man's situation and the Lord Jesus put his hand on you and he said, I will, and he says, be thou clean, and then you became clean that very moment, what would you want to do? <laughs> You'd want to go home to that wife and kids. You want to go back to living a life. You want to go back to living the way things used to be because life has been restored once again. No, this is a wonderful thing that has taken place here. But Jesus, this is what he tells him. Jesus doesn't tell him to go back to his loved ones. Jesus doesn't tell him to go back to his wife and kids. Jesus doesn't tell him to go home. What does Jesus do? Jesus, he directs this man to do this. Tell no one and go straight to the priests so the priests can make an offering. Okay, why? Why? Uh, come on, you'd probably be asking the same thing. I want to go home. <laughs> I want to see my wife and kids. It's been a long time since I've seen my baby girl. It's been a long time since I've seen my newborn. It's been a long time since I played ball in the yard with my son. It's been a long time. And you want me to go straight to the Look at verse 14. And he charged him to tell no man. That's kind of a hard secret to keep, by the way. He charged him to tell no man, but go and show thyself to the priest and offer for the, thy cleansing according as Moses commanded. Okay, church, listen. According to Old Testament law, an offering was to be made for the cleansing of a leper. According to Old Testament law. So when Jesus told him to tell no man but go, it's like this, this is the sense here. All right, let me have your attention. The sense is this. I'm giving you direct orders. Don't get sidetracked. I'm giving you direct orders. Go straight to the priest so that the priest can give an offering like it was commanded by Moses. Go straight there. Don't you think if the Lord Jesus is saying go straight there, it's kind of significant. It's kind of important. And we, they, we right now might not understand it, but I think they would have understood it. And we're going to explain it here in a little bit. But Jesus was giving direct orders. Don't go home. Don't talk to anybody else. Go straight to the priest so that they can offer an offering. That's what Jesus wanted there. Now, now here's the thing. When Jesus wanted him to go directly to the priest, here's the 
what the priests could do. They could pronounce him clean. They could not make him clean. They can only pronounce that he's clean. So what would happen is that they would, someone with leprosy, they would come, and they, the priest would do is that they would do an examination. They would see, they, they would check, and they would make sure, uh, do you have any, any blemishes on your skin? They want to make sure that he's completely clean. And then after they, they, they would give a good thorough examination, they would, according to Leviticus chapter number 14, they were supposed to give a certain offering. Now, in Leviticus 14, God told Moses as to how this, uh, how this offering was to be conducted. Now, I'm going to explain it here, and feel free to read Leviticus chapter 14 this afternoon if you like. There is a long process behind it, but I'm just going to talk about the mere beginning uh, parts of it. In Leviticus 14, God told Moses, when someone is cleansed of a leprosy, take two birds, clean birds, and also one of the birds set aside, but the, one of the birds that you have, you're supposed to drown it, kill it in a vessel with water. You're supposed to kill it. It's, the Bible talks about running water. That term running water means get it from a source where there's flowing water. It's, it's a life that, in that way. So get it, kill that bird. And once that bird is dead, shed its blood. Pretty gruesome. Old Testament's pretty awesome. Shed its blood, kill it, spill its blood. And then what they were supposed to do is that they were supposed to take hyssop, cedar wood, scarlet. Scarlet would be just, we know the color scarlet, kind of a red type color. But that word scarlet, it would be kind of like a thread or a cord or yarn. And that living bird. And they were supposed to use that scarlet to tie all those things together. So you have hyssop, you have a bird. And you have cedar wood, and that cedar wood probably act like a stick, kind of like a rod. And so you would tie it to the end of it, and as you would grab the wood, it's kind of like you have a rod with a bird and hyssop tied together with a scarlet thread. Can you kind of see it in your head? It's kind of just like a rod there. And what the priests were to do is they were supposed to take that living bird and, and, and all the other instruments there. They were to go to that blood and they were supposed to dip it in the blood of that dead bird, and then when they go to that leper, they would flick the blood on the leper. Blech. Come on, that's gross. Don't think like, oh, it's not that bad. Yeah, if someone spilled blood on you, you're freaking out. Just saying. So they would dip it, and they would fling it on them seven times. And then after it was done seven times, then the priest would say this, you're clean. You're clean. Now, there, there was more to that process there in Leviticus chapter 14. The man, he would have to have shaved his head. He would have to make sure that his clothes uh, were washed. There was all that. But the point is this, the priest would already have pronounced him clean. You're clean already. And then what would they do is that they would take that living bird, and that, that living bird, it would still have the stains of the blood of the dead bird, and let that bird go. And it would fly up into the heavens and be free. That's what it would do. Okay. So what's this have to do with anything? Okay, church, now listen. According to my understanding, that type of offering would have been very rarely done. Very, very rarely done. Well, why would it have been very, very rarely done? Because there's no cure for leprosy. There was no cure for leprosy back then. Praise God, there's a cure now. Thank the Lord that there's treatment for it now. But back then, there was no cure. And so this offering would have been very, very, very rarely done. Uh, uh, one commentator said it like this. It's like they would have to like dust off this part of the book of Leviticus to, to be re-familiar with how to go about this offering. Because there was no cure for it. Now, and one commentator said this. It's possible. It's just possible. It's possible. That the last time that they would have done this offering, this way of offering, would have been, well, the days of Miriam and Moses. Way back when. When God struck Miriam with leprosy because she was having a fit about Moses' wife. She was complaining about her and Moses, I mean, God struck her with leprosy. Remember that? Just nod and help me out. That'd be good. Yeah. So it could have been even then. But wait a minute. 
Miriam's leprosy was temporary. Who would have cured Miriam? Come on. God. God would have cured Miriam. Oh, but what about, oh, oh, what about Naaman? Come on. Dipped seven times. Remember that in Jordan River? He dipped seven times, and he came back, and he was healed. Okay, listen. The priest, they would have been familiar with Naaman as well. But who would have cured Naaman? God. So what we see here, ladies and gentlemen, look at your Bibles. Verse number 14. And he charged him to tell no man, but go and show thyself to the priest, and offer for thy cleansing according as Moses commanded, for a testimony unto them. What's a testimony? Testimony means a witness. Testimony means evidence. Testimony means a, a declaration of something. Here's the thing. This is an offering that they would never have hardly have ever done. Probably the last time it may have been done with the days of Moses and with Miriam. But wait a minute. How was Miriam cleansed? God. How was Naaman cleansed? God. And here's this leper who was full of leprosy. Everybody knows he was full of leprosy. And they're examining him. And they're looking at him. They're looking under his arms. They're looking under his legs. They're looking at his feet. They're looking at his face. They're looking at his neck. They're looking at his back. And they want to make sure, is this man clean? How could this man be clean? And Jesus says, when you go and tell him to give of this offering, it will act as a testimony. It will act as a witness. It will act to declare something that is truth. And what was true? The Messiah, God, showed up. God was there. Because God was the only one who can cleanse leprosy. God was the, the one who cleansed Miriam of her leprosy. God was the one who cleansed Naaman of his leprosy. And here is this leper here. Listen, you know why it's so important that Jesus said, don't go anywhere else. Go straight to the temple. Or go straight to the priest. And talk to the priest. Go straight to them. Why is that? Because here was the, such the important news. He's wanting to let them know, Messiah showed up. Messiah's here. The Savior's here. And not only, not only, church, would that offering act as a witness about who Jesus is, but it would also act as a witness as to what Jesus was there to do. Listen, before someone could be declared cleansed, before someone could be declared, you're clean of your leprosy, something had to die. Come on. Something had to die. Some blood needed to be shed. And then for someone to be set free and be restored, they would have had to have had that blood applied to them. Yeah. Are you, come, you, you smelling what I'm stepping in? Yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. Come on now. What that bird represented, that first bird, as it died, represents the Lord Jesus Christ. And listen, before anybody could be cleansed of their sin, sin is a picture of leprosy, remember? Leprosy is a picture of sin, that's what I mean, excuse me. Before anybody could be declared cleansed of their leprosy, their sin, something had to die and that blood needed to be applied. Here's the thing, ladies and gentlemen. Listen, I want to, Jesus wanted this leper to present himself to the priests so that his genuine cleansing would act as a testimony that the Messiah had arrived. Now, now, folks, here's the truth. Without the shedding of blood, there is no salvation. Without the shedding of blood, there is no cleansing of sin. Without the shedding of blood, there is no restoration. Without the shedding of blood, ladies and gentlemen, and that was true back then, and that is still true today. And it's the only way, ladies and gentlemen, through the shed blood of Jesus Christ can genuinely cleanse you. It's only through the shed blood of Jesus Christ that can genuinely cleanse a sinner and restore them back to a better life. Listen, ladies and gentlemen, when, when, the, Lord Jesus, when the Lord Jesus cleansed this leper, it benefited his life greatly. He was able to be restored back to his family. He was able to be restored back to living an abundant life. 
But here's the thing. When a person places their faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and his finished work, when he willingly shed his blood on the cross and they put their faith in him, listen, there's a restoration that is greater than any other restoration. That restoration is not just talking about being restored back to, a, uh, uh, back to society. It's not a restoration that's being uh, restored back to a line of work. No, this restoration, when a sinner places their faith in Jesus and Jesus alone for the, for, uh, the, for the cleansing of sin, they are restored into fellowship with God. And that is the best type of restoration that any person could ever have. That's it. Yep. When Jesus cleansed the leper, his life had meaning again. When Jesus cleansed the leper, his life had purpose again. When Jesus cleansed the leper, it was a life worth living. Now listen to this. When Jesus cleanses you of your sin, by the shedding of his blood... Your life can be genuinely changed for the better. Amen. Genuinely. Because here's the thing. After Christ cleanses you of your sin, you can genuinely live a life of joy. Live, live, live a life of joy. Okay. <laughs> There's a real big difference between happiness and joy. There's a huge difference between happiness and joy. Okay, here's what happens. We're, we're dismissed for church. We're getting ready to leave the parking lot. And then all of a sudden, as you're pulling out another church member, let's just say Brother Bo, because I love Brother Bo. Let's just say Brother Bo, it turns out he's a really bad driver. I don't know. No. All of a sudden, he T-bones you. And then he said, what were you doing? I was on my phone. How many of you are just going to be tickled pink and thrilled that that happened? <laughs> Absolutely not. You're going to be angry. You're going to be upset. You're going to be mad. You will not be happy. Why? Because happiness depends on what is happening. Happiness depends on what is going on. But there's a real big difference between happiness and joy. Because you can be in the midst of horrible things going on, but you can still have the joy of the Lord in your heart. You could still have the joy of the Lord in the midst of your trials. You could still have the joy of the Lord as you're going through some hardship and through some difficulties and, and, and you're going through the, the loss of loved ones and you're going through trials. You're going through situations in your marriage. You can be going through trials with situations with your kids. You can be going through all those things. But here's the thing. You can still have joy. How in the world can I have joy? It starts by the shedding of blood. Yep. And when you place your faith in the Lord Jesus... And that his blood, listen, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord, whosoever, whosoever, whosoever shall call. Listen, there is a responsibility to call. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord might be saved. Come on, come on, shall be saved. Jesus was willing to put his hand on a leper. Wilt thou? I will. Aren't you thankful? God's not willing that any should perish. Not willing that any. He's not willing. He's not willing. He's not willing that any should perish. But that all should come to repentance. All shall come to repentance. All shall come to repentance. Listen, there's a responsibility on our part to come to repentance. All shall come to repentance. And when all come to repent, I'm not making this up. It's in the word of God, church. It's right there. All shall come to repentance. And when we come to repentance and we put our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and that it was his blood that he shed for us on our behalf. Listen, I'm so thankful that he became the propitiation for our sin. The propitiation. What in the world are talking about? Propitiation. What in the world does that mean, propitiation? I've said this before. I'll say it again. The word propitiation means this. The wrath removing sacrifice. The wrath removing. What does that mean? It means you deserve wrath. That means I deserve wrath. What type of wrath? The wrath of God. And the wrath of God is described to us, ladies and gentlemen, in the word of God. Listen, are we aware that the Lord talks more about hell than he does about heaven? 
Yeah, in, in the Word of God, he talks a whole lot more about hell than he does about heaven. And hell is a very real place. It is as real as this room that we are in right now. And if a person is not willing to call upon the name of the Lord, come to a place of repentance, place their faith in his finished work on the cross, when he shed his blood, ladies and gentlemen, if we're not willing to do that, then here's the, I'm not trying to be doomy and gloomy. I'm not trying to, dis, uh, to discourage you. I'm not trying to hurt you. But I am trying to tell you the truth of the gospel. And the truth of the gospel is this. Without the shedding of blood... Without, without blood being applied to us, here's the thing. We are destined for that place. Destined. Well, that's not very loving. <laughs> for God so loved the world. For God so loved the world. You know what's not loving? Him not making a way <laughs> for salvation. But he made a way. He made a way. How much more loving is that? He made a way for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And here's the thing. When a person is truly, genuinely cleansed, it's like they're that bird that's set free. Listen, one bird had to die. And then as the other one is set free, it still had blood stains on it. It still had blood stains. It was still set free. Was that, was it the blood stain? Was did that blood stain come from that bird? Nope. It came from this bird. Hey, aren't you thankful? Can you accept the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior? His blood cleanses us from all unrighteousness. His blood cleanses us. Listen, I'm not saying that you don't ever sin again. <laughs> come on, if you've been saved for a while, you know that ain't the truth. You know you sin, we sin every day. We try not to sin, but we still sin. But what I am saying is this, because of his cleansing, we don't get the wrath of God. We don't get that place called hell. We don't get it. You know, I think we could say this. You turn on the news, you walk out these doors, you will say that there is an epidemic of spiritual leprosy leprosy there's an epidemic of what sin and that epidemic this is what it's doing it's eating away and it's destroying lives it's eating away and it's destroying marriages it's eating away and it's destroying homes it's eating away and it's destroying 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 how can we put a stop to it can we put a stop to it through politics no can we put a stop to it through man's philosophies no. Can we put a stop to it through man's psychology? No. Can we put a stop to it through 12 steps? No. Can we put a stop to it through the, uh, the, the do's and the don'ts of life? No. This is how we put a stop to it. The cleansing of the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. It's only through his blood that there can be cleansing. And listen, when there's cleansing that takes place, listen, a home can be restored. A marriage can be restored. Societies can be restored. How can all that happen? Only by the blood of the Lord Jesus. That's it, church. There might be some of you here this morning. Listen, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. I don't know your heart. Can't see your heart. I'm not God. Many, many of you are like, yeah, praise the Lord for that. <laughs> praise the Lord for that, that you're not God. I'm not God. I'm not God. I'm not God. I'm not God. But the Holy Spirit of God might be knocking on your heart right now. And he's very, very loud. He's trying to get you to understand. You're not cleansed. You're not cleansed. You know all about me. You, you even know all about my sacrifice. You know all about me. But here's what you've never done. You never placed your faith in me. You never called out to me. I'm right here. I'm right here. I've made a way. I'm right here. But you need to rely on me to save you. You need to rely on my finished work to save you. But right now, you're relying on you. You're relying on your good works. You're relying on your past. You're relying on whatever it is. But listen, if we're not putting our faith in his shed blood for our salvation, here's the thing, folks. We are destined. We are destined to spend eternity separated from him. But you can be clean. You can be clean. 
This very morning, you can be clean. And you can be restored. Restored. Restored to having a good relationship with God. And then when you see God, you will not see him as your judge. You will see him as your father. But that only comes through his shed blood. Where is true, genuine cleansing found? In the shed blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, we thank you, Father, for this day.